this project, we're going to be deploying a secure MySQL instance on Google Cloud using Cloud SQL with private networking only. We'll start by first setting up a simple custom VPC and network. Next, we'll provision a MySQL 8.0 Cloud SQL instance with automatic backups and maintenance applied. Cloud SQL is Google's GCP's managed database service. It's sometimes called Database as a Service or Platform as a Service where it manages provisioning the servers and handles all the, the maintenance for you. So you end up getting, here's the endpoint and here's the database. Now, public IP access will be disabled on this database and the database is going to be fully isolated within our VPC. We spin up a lightweight Ubuntu VM and we install PHP MyAdmin. This is a popular browser-based tool for working with MySQL. The VM itself will be public. So you'll be able to access this VM anywhere and, and interact with your database even though the database is private. We also load a Sacula sample data set. I hope I'm you know, pronouncing that correctly. This is a fictional DVD rental database, which is, seems like it's a bit uh, from another time, and it is. This database is over 20 years old. It gives you lots of tables. You can do joins with keys. And if you're curious, and you, you do that right in PHP, my admin is how we'll demo it. And if you're curious about other possible ways to interact with the database, you can always go to ChatGPT or Google. They know all about this database. It's been around for almost 20 years. So it'll allow you to, to work with various queries if you want to test features of MySQL. By the end of this project, you'll have a fully private MySQL setup and GCP, complete with a secure web interface and some real world data for testing. As always, everything is managed through Terraform and Bash Script, which gives you a clean, repeatable way of building this project. And the idea is that you should be able to take this project and adapt it for your own use fairly easily. Okay, so let's take a quick look at the architecture diagram that we're going to build. This is in your project that you've set up. And so the first thing we're going to have is we're going to have the VPC and subnet. So we create a VPC called MySQL VPC, and we have one simple subnet, and it's a MySQL subnet. And in that subnet, we're going to deploy two things. The first is the Cloud SQL instance. This is the platform as a service or database as a service offering from GCP. It's running, in our instance, it's going to be um, MySQL 8, version 8. And it's private, so there's there's no public IP address associated with this SQL instance. Then we have the VM. The VM is Ubuntu, uh, and what we do is in the metadata startup script, we are going to install PHP MyAdmin, which can call Apache and PHP. It's a simple script. Um, and this instance is actually public. So what happens is... From an end user perspective, you're, you're going to access the public uh, PHP MyAdmin interfaces, and then it's going to privately talk to the MySQL instance. So the database is protected, but this is a, just sort of a quick debugging tool for us to look at the, the database and to load the, the Sacula database. The other two parts that are outside of the VPC is we create a private hosted zone so that we can have a, a simple DNS name associated with the SQL instance. Instead of referring it to as IP address, you can use the the logical uh, uh, IP address or the logical DNS name that we define an A record in here for. And then finally, the last piece is when we run the build, we generate a random sysadmin password for MySQL, and we stick it in MySQL credentials in the secrets manager so we can access it securely and not worry about hard, hard coded passwords. This password will be different every time you do a build, and so that's that's what we're going to build. Okay, now let's discuss the prerequisites. Um, first off, there's a video out there called GCP and Terraform Easy Setup that walks you through setting up a, a very basic GCP project. And it focuses on how you create the a build account that you need within Google Cloud. And you end up getting this credentials.json file, which we'll reference when we do the build. So that's the, uh, the first part is you need that Google Cloud account and the build identity. So watch that video for how to do that. Then you also need the gcloud CLI that's used in the, the scripts for building. And then finally, you'll need the, the latest Terraform. Okay, now it's time to build the code. So what we're going to do is we have the download repository link. So we're going to copy that, and then we're going to go to our Ubuntu development environment, paste it in. And so in all our projects, the first thing that we have is we have a script called check env. So I'm going to do check env and make sure everything is set for the build environment. So I'm going to run that, and it's going to go, hey, you don't have credentials.json. And so what we need to do is we need to 
go to our laptop. I'm going to go to my laptop and I'm going to first up here. I'm going to go to my SQL. I'm going to upload a file. And this is the credentials.json that we did from the prerequisites video. We'll click on that. And now we're going to do uh, check Andy. And it's going to go, hey, you are now valid. So um, the next thing we need to do, this is also GC specific, is we need to update the APIs. There's there's various APIs you have to enable. Some people do this in Terraform. I do it in a script because it's just easier to manage. Uh, when you're doing rapid builds with Terraform, it, it, it's a little funky. So we do it in a script. So I'm going to do API setup. Now, the first time you, you run this, it may take several minutes to run. Okay, so once the uh, API is all set, we can now run the apply. Now, the apply takes 10 to 15 minutes for, to complete. Okay, the build has completed. So now what I want to do is bring up the GCP console and let's take a look at what got built. So in the console, the first thing we're going to look at is the Cloud SQL instance. So you go up to the top and you do SQL. We'll see Manage SQL. So you click on that. This will give you all your database instances. We have the one, the MySQL instance. that's using MySQL 8. We'll drill down on that. In here, we've got the overview, but let's go to connections. The connections here, this shows the, the networking that we're in this project. We have private IP or private IP connectivity. There's no public connectivity. And then our IP address is that right here, 10.200.03. Now we do have a uh, DNS entry for that in the private hosted zone. So you don't have to actually use the IP address. You can use the DNS name. Okay, so what's interesting about GCP is it does have a lot of database management stuff in the console. So the first thing that you, you'll notice is that it has the users. And this is the default users, but I can go in and add users directly on the console. Uh, normally, you would have to get connected to the database to do that. And then the databases, same deal. It shows you all, your, all the databases, and I can create new databases here. So there's a certain level of uh, you know database uh, operations that you can do in the console. When we do the demo, we'll also show you Cloud SQL Studio, which is a complete uh, SQL client for doing queries and viewing your tables. But we'll, we'll save that for the demo. Then for uh, backups, we've got uh, once a day for seven days. Does it uh, 4 a.m. to 8 a.m.? You can you control all that stuff. Uh, we don't have any replicas defined. And in here, you also have system insights, which is going to give you the performance of your database. So this shows you your your basic metrics, CPU utilization, disk utilization, errors, uh, if you're over the read-write operations, we, we chose a relatively small instance, an SSD of only 10 gigs and one virtual CPU. So uh, at production, you're going to use something much bigger. Uh, but this is just a good way to monitor the system uh, through the console to see if, if there's anything uh, askew, like disk write operations being above. So that's pretty much it for the um, the SQL instance. And so the next thing we want to look at is the PHP MyM VM instance. So we're going to go to the VM instances. And what you will see, the Ubuntu image that we've deployed. And in that Ubuntu image, there is a metadata boot script, which is going to install PHP, Apache, and then my PHP admin, and then configure it into that database that we did before. Now, the thing to keep in mind is the database was private. But this is public. So this is sort of an interface into our database. So you have the, the external IP address. So this is public, but the database is private. And so this is just a, I'm not sure you would do this in production, but this is just a quick way to um, explore your database using kind of a standard PHP MyAdmin. admin. It's a relatively modest instance. I believe it has 10 gigs of disk space. It's uh, 10 gigs US Central uh, 1A. So that's for the VM. And then the last piece we'll show in the console is if you go and do secrets, secret manager, this is where we automatically generate a random password for the MySQL database. The, the, the account is sysadmin. And then the password is right in here. If I do view secret value, you've got the password. 
Okay, so now we're going to demo the solution. So we're going to demo it two ways. The first way is we're going to use that Ubuntu VM running PHP MyAdmin. Connect to that via a browser. And then the second way we're going to demo it is we're going to go back into the GCP console and there's a um, SQL Studio uh, interface in there. And we'll, we're going to connect there and just show, show do queries from both environments. So the first thing we want to do is in your Ubuntu development environment, we want to validate SH. And what that's going to do is go pull out the P address of where PHP admin is running, verify that it is running, and also it gives you the internal name. So this is the one that's in the private DNS. So I'm going to copy this right here. And then we're going to bring up a browser and say, right. All right. So it already knows it's connecting to the our database because we've configured it. But we need to do sysadmin. And then we need to go back to our secret and pull that out. Put that in there. Log in. And what you will see is you've got all your databases. We're mostly concerned about Sackula. And Sackula, again, is a DVD rental store. So what you'll find is there's a lot of tables in here associated with movies and rentals. So let's take a look at two. We've got the actor database or the actor table. And it's got a bunch of made up names. And some of them are a little bit funny, like uh, Uma Wood or Cuba Oliver. It, it, it looks like it, it, it took real... Uh, actors' first names and last names and trampled or sc scrambled them up so they don't make any sense, but they're, they're kind of funny if you look at them. Same thing with the movies. The other thing is that there's a actor ID, and that's going to be important for doing joins. So if I go back to film, this is going to be a list of all the films in the database. And again, these are also kind of they're, they're fake, and they're kind of funny because, it, you know, a touching saga of a butler and a hunter who must, and you're like, what is the must? So this is, again, here we have film ID and um, actor ID. So everything has join keys that you can use for joins. And so what we'll do is show a very simple join. So I'm going to go to the SQL tab, back to our documentation, and go to the very end. And there's two queries I want to put in. The first one is query one. And it's going to join the actors table in the film database to get a list of actors and films. So I'll, I'll go into here and say paste and say go. And it's a go through, and it, it generates this very simple table of the film is the first column, and then the actor in there. So you get, you know, a film, and then multiple rows in there. There's a second query in there. It's a little bit different. So let's go back into here, and let's look at the second query. And let's go back to our instance, and go back to the top, show query box. Put in the new query, and say go. And what you're going to get is uh, something a little bit different, but it's just the same data represented differently. So we've got the the movie, and then we have actor names, which is a comma separated list of of actors in the movie. Instead of having one, you know, multiple rows, it's just one row with all the actors. So that's this PHP my admin. Again, this is public, and we're connecting to a private database. So what we're going to do is log out of this. And now let's go back into the GCP and console and go to the SQL, Managed SQL again, click on my SQL instance, then click on Cloud Studio. I'm just going to say, okay, what, what database do you want to get to? We're going to connect to Sacula. Sacula. Sysadmin. And then I'm going to go back to my secrets, copy that in. Paste, paste it in. And now we are in, we see the same database um, inside the GCP console. So we've got uh, run. It's going to show you the same tables. It's presented a little bit different. The actor ID. Do the same thing with film. Say run. And it will give you the films. So let's create a new tab. And let's go back to um, to the one with the comma separated. Click on that. Go back to our SQL Studio interface and pop that in there. Hit run. And you can see it shows you uh, the same query that it did before. So GCP is pretty cool. It's got a complete um, client within GCP console. Um, so it's really slick that way. At this point, I think we've done everything we want to do on this database. So I'm going to uh, close this, close this. 
Now the, the thing we want to do is we want to be a good steward of our cloud account. So I'm going to go to um, console where I built it and I'm going to run destroy. And destroy takes 10 to 15 minutes to run.